You mentioned discerning a Brahma life preceded by a human life. Given that was so many eons ago, was the human physically recognisable, like this? And then somebody's drawn a stick man. <laughs> if so, how is it that evolution plays the same way every eon? If not, how should we understand the concept of humans? Just any animal that evolves enough consciousness to learn Dharma? Are there ever multiple species of human at a time? What an interesting question. So yeah, lots of things are sticky over time and sticky over eons. And humans looking like humans is one of those things. So even in previous eons, humans will be more or less the same. Though there are variations, for example, the lifespan of humans can be very long, hundreds of years and it can go down to very short, maybe just barely out of childhood, for example. And to my understanding, we see that mirrored in other religions and other spiritual traditions as well. There's reports of um, Noah, you know, Noah of the Ark, having lived very, very long life. And nowadays we tend to think, oh, it's allegory or something like that. but. And we see this repeated in, in many spiritual traditions. But anyway, basic form of the human is um, sticky across eons. And it's quite complex to understand why this is. And also all of the detail we don't have. Even when we understand patana, this very detailed explanation of cause and effect, we still don't have the entirety of, of all of causality there. Because so many things fall into types of cause like decisive support, where we're not really dealing with a productive or deterministic cause. We're dealing with probabilities and habits and things which are, are difficult to pinpoint. But anyway, for one life to create another life, there are two main ingredients. The first ingredient you've heard me speak about a lot of times. This is what we call the Abhisankara. And the Abhisankara is the action that you do that produces the next life. It's the seed that we plant that gives its fruit as the first conscious moment of the next life. It's the winning cow. We've given lots of similes for this and we call it the Abhisankara. So of all of the actions that we've done in this life, wholesome or unwholesome, one of them is going to be the winner and it's going to be the productive cause for the first conscious moment of the next life and for many other things in the next life. That's the first ingredient to produce a new life. The second ingredient is the craving and delusion that surrounds that Abhisankara. So in other words, when we are doing these actions, when we're planting these seeds, we're doing it because we want something. That wanting something might be as simple as wanting to survive. Oftentimes we're wanting some kind of a result or progress for ourselves or for others, but we're wanting something. We're still involved in some kind of identity. So let's take an example. The example is that you, your Abhisankara is offering an apple to a monk. So it's wholesome. There's no defilements at that time when you're doing the offering. It's it's purely wholesome. But surrounding that offering an apple to a monk might be, I want the monk to enjoy it. You're wanting something and there's the delusion that the monk exists. Or, oh, I've done a good deed, right? You're believing that you exist. So this kind of craving and delusion is all the time surrounding the actions that we do. Now, the Abhisankara, the action that we do, decides if the life that we're going to is a good quality or a low quality or what it's going to be. But the flavour of the life is determined much more by that craving and delusion. So if you do lots and lots of wholesome actions, if you plant lots and lots of wholesome seeds in this life and every time you do it you wish, may I be a deva, may I be a deva, by power of this wholesome action, may I be a deva. If one of those wholesome actions 
is the winning cow seed that produces your next life, then probably you're going to be a deva because that was what was being craved for. Now, the object of that craving is obviously an identity and a concept. You're not wishing, may I be Namarupa perishing. The object of that delusion is a concept, it's an identity of some kind. And that perception of that identity is involved in the creation of the next life. So those perceptions are sticky over time. So even if you've taken a break in a Brahma life for a long time and no perception of human has arisen, the sanya, the, the perception of what a human is, remains sticky over time. You're still able to crave it. And that craving helps produce it. Helps. It's not the only causal factor, but it helps produce it. And that's why we see many concepts, sticky over time, sticky over eons, sticky between realms. The devas actually in nature are very similar to the, to the humans, even though it's a different realm. Because the way that we perceive things and the way that we crave after them is involved in how things are created and caused. That's a very, very brief overview. Are there any questions on that topic? Yeah. So that Brahma there, Abhi Sankara, that created that life, was from a being that was in Jhana when he died? Yes, that's right. And does that mean that they were in the Buddha's dispensation? Is Jhana only around in the, in the Buddha's dispensation? Or? No, jhana exists outside of the Buddha's dispensation, but it doesn't always exist in the, in the human realm. It exists at times of high wisdom, but it was there before the, the Buddha. So, yeah, Brahmas can be coming and going even when there's no Buddha around. Anything else? Since yeah. you mentioned the varying lifespans of humans, have, have you or anybody you know discerned a human life that is significantly longer? Yes, and when we're discerning our past lives in the normal way, in the way of Namarupa, it's quite difficult to know exactly how many years you're dealing with because mm. we're not working in that kind of conceptual measure of time. But nonetheless, you can notice, okay, this is the arising and passing away of Nama and Rupa in this human life. And then this is the arising and passing away of Nama and Rupa in this human life, much longer. <laughs> but it, it's not accurate enough to say, oh, in that life I was 204 or something like that. We're just roughly. Mm -hmm. That's more, more than 150 for sure. I think significantly longer than what we would expect from a, a human life as we know it now. Same, same question for if you discerned like a really tall human in the northern continent. I have not discerned a really tall human in the northern <laughs> continent. I haven't. I haven't. I don't know anybody else who has either. But we're working with a relatively small sample size. Mm. Anything else on this topic? Yes. 